Created in 2005 and hosted by security industry veterans, Paul Security Weekly is your source for in-depth coverage of the latest vulnerabilities, exploits, and security research. Our weekly security news discussion dives deep into the security issues we face today and potential solutions in a fun and lively atmosphere. Each week, we bring on guests from the security community to learn about their journey and discuss topics relevant to their work and research. You can also subscribe to our show by visiting securityweekly.com forward slash subscribe or look for Paul Security Weekly in your favorite podcast catcher. We've recorded a ton of content over the years, so we created Spotify playlists featuring some of our favorite episodes, including interviews with Marcus Random, John McAfee, and Chris Roberts, to name a few. You can find them at securityweekly.com forward slash starter packs. Welcome back to Enterprise Security Weekly. Uh, Today for this interview, Pascal Menezes joins us today to talk about building a certification program for SASE services. Pascal is an expert in secure networking technologies, has contributed to industry standards on secure networking, and holds over 30 patents. Welcome to the show, Pascal. Adrian, thank you so much. What an exciting show this is. And I believe you also founded back in 2021 MEF or or MEF? Uh, Yeah, You know, a bunch of us companies uh, originally founded MEF, which was really taking LAN Ethernet and then moving it out to the wide area networks, which was considered blasphemy back then, 2001, but now it's become the norm. Uh, It's $80 billion market, and that's where MEF started from, MEF, started from that background, but we're doing much, much more, uh, gone up the stack and not all the automations, we'll talk about that. (laughs) Okay, yeah, yeah, so it's... um... Yeah, I, I hadn't heard about it before, but, you know, I know somebody has to do that in, in these industries, you know, build the standards and uh, do certification and things like that. And it's um, it's interesting with security because security moves so quickly, right? Like, it, you know, is that a challenge? Is that something you you take into account when building a standard? Do you think, you know, is, is by the time we get done with the certification, is SASE even going to exist anymore? Is that is that a concern? Uh, no, SASE is going to definitely, it's on, it's just nascent and growing, you know, exponentially. But no, and that's not my concern. The certification is not a one-time certification either. We'll talk about that. It's a continuous certification just for the fact that threats are always evolving. So you can't do just one certification and said you're done. That's that's not going to happen. Right, right. And uh, SASE, for, for those uh, who are not familiar or can't remember exactly, uh, I think the Gartner definition includes uh, SD-WAN, SWG, uh, next-gen firewalls, ZTNA, and CASB in that definition. Yeah, really what it ends, yeah. So really what it does, it, it basically is SASE is putting the security functions in the cloud. And so basically wherever you are as a user, whether you're in your buildings, your campuses, or your homes, or your remote, uh, you're going to access to that cloud that is acting like a scrubbing center and you normally access it through SD-WAN, uh, but it yeah. could be other IP VPN technologies, but SD-WAN has become the synonymous with SASE uh, because it has application performance and steering and blah, blah, blah. Right. Uh, the second thing is that you hit that security cloud and it's the scrubbing center before you go anywhere, whether you go to hyperscaler, so even the internet, it's really gonna be, and they have security functions, some of the ones you talked about, SWIGs and CASBs and next-gen mm-hmm. firewalls and so on. Uh, and then also there is that whole authentication authorization process, which is ZTNA and enables. So all of that is basically cybersecurity in the cloud. Uh, you can get access. You go through that cloud wherever you are. The only challenge is that cloud has to be very close to the user. Otherwise, you get latencies. And that's yeah. why, you know, it's a great edge compute use case. So. Yeah, and that's, um, you know, the way I kind of think about this also is a lot of security technologies are out of band, and it seems like most of SASE is is going to be in band, so you can actively, uh, uh, you know, detect, prevent, clean up uh, the the pipe, do things that you, you couldn't do uh, with, with a monitor and respond uh, type of uh, technology. Yes, and, and so true. And I think what's gone on is, you know, since covid Many, many enterprises have to struggle with, oh, my God, we had this, you know, this Mort and Castle model, whatever you call it, where we put everything, we try to secure our boundaries, our sites. And that was great prior to COVID, but obviously COVID just changed changed the dynamics rapidly. And I think that has opened up a whole new era of as ITs move to the cloud, they're like, why can't cybersecurity move to the cloud? Why is it that I have to put all these cybersecurity, you know, units and you know these appliances all over 
to make it work and keep them up to date and all that. So I think that the idea is just throw it in the cloud, cloud make it cloud native, virtualize it, um, and then basically I can refresh it all the time. And it's mm -hmm. just like, like a utility. It acts like a utility. I don't have to make my water or my, my or electricity and so on. So I don't know if that answered your question, but it's, it's, it's a very, very incredible model. And I think it's kind of where the whole industry is moving to. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely gives you a lot of a uh, lot of options to, um, you know, to to manage things. Whereas, um, you know, at, at least for things where you can be in line, right? Like, like I imagine, uh, you know, with with uh, this is mostly going to be things that are not SaaS, right? And these are going to be most of your your own workloads, which for a lot of companies are your most critical workloads. Uh, actually, you can get to all the SaaS clouds too. I mean, so well, right? Because that's what CASB. That's yeah, kind of and, and on right. top of it, the what's going on with the edge and the edge coming in, you know, hyperscalers are also, you know, partnering with the edge for the multi-axis edge compute. And from the edge is where you're picking up these SASE clouds because of the low latency and you need um, the SD-WAN, you know, SSE, ZTNA parts. Uh, but you're also picking up, you know, all kinds of other services like cloud connectivity, the edge cloud right there. Um, and then... You know, and they're adding in more stuff. And so, you know, we're seeing a lot of the AI ML starting to mer merge in and to do, you know, uh, SecOps. And there's all kinds of, you know, innovation happening with the edge. And I just talked to a great, you know, we, we also run a podcast. And I just talked to a great company talking about how they're now adding into that whole SASE cloud, the whole idea of, um, you know, to, to uh, detection and basically prevention of fraud, you know, and mm. that's never thought about like a fraud would be, you know, as part of a security function. And the answer is, yeah, fraud is, yeah. is rampant. So it was a very cool idea to add fraud in as another security function. Yeah. More and more, I, I talked to more CISOs who are basically reaching out, asking for advice in some of these forums that, that I'm in that have a lot of CISOs in them. We're saying, uh, yeah, fraud is now under me, you know, so like, like anybody out there who's, uh, who's had fraud as, as part of their responsibilities before that I can chat with. And, you know, I remember coming up, uh, I really cut my teeth in security at a payment processor at U.S. Bank's uh, payment processor. And we literally sat right next to loss prevention. Uh, so I ended up uh, working with them a lot, helping them and, and they would help me with some of my investigations. And, uh, and, and I, I learned a lot of respect for the the work they have to do and the constraints they have. Like it's uh, I, I didn't understand how big and how creative uh, some of the fraud out there was until, until I worked with that group. Absolutely. And, and you know, the threat actors are, they, they're just so smart now. <laughs> There's so much tooling out there, so much automation of uh, that. You can go to dark net and just grab. And so I think it's just getting more and more sophisticated. And I think it's really frustrating for the good guys to basically just try to keep up and, you know, such yeah. a shortage. And so this is why I think, you know, if you have a shortage of people and, you know, or you're a sm small multi SME, like a, a small medium enterprise, or even a large enterprise, and you just can't get the talent. You might as well just say, Hey, let me just go through a SASE cloud and, and let yeah. some other managed provider manage all of that upgrades. And we're seeing the vendors, the SASE vendors who are producing the SASE bits and the, SASE technology, they're also offering cloud technology, SASE clouds directly to the enterprise too. So they're partnering with the providers, but they're also, you know, selling directly. And there's, you know, there's all these variations. And you saw now the hyperscalers have announced getting into the SASE game too. So it's it's really intriguing to see mm -hmm. this idea of has IT moved to the cloud, cybersecurity moved to the cloud. And I think it's really, very brilliant. So. Yeah, as you mentioned, you know, like like you've already mentioned cloud several times, you know, it's it's very much adjacent and, and you know relevant to to the cloud movement, you know, to you know let let me let somebody else uh do some of the heavy lifting there where it, like there's no there's no real advantage for me to do this, you know, to build my network from the ground up, manage everything related to my network and network security from the ground up, you know, so if if I can share some responsibility with that, you know, and, and use a service for that, you know, it's, it's, uh, uh, I think a smart place to get some efficiency and some, some cost efficiency also. Totally. I, I completely agree. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think the other term we need to talk about is, is NAS. Uh, I assume that means network as a service. Uh, and, and, 
you know, it seems like uh, SD WAN and some of these SASE uh, products and services uh, would kind of fall under that b- banner. Like, how do you define NAS and, and where do you put? Is SASE adjacent to that? Is, is it within that uh, within that box? Uh, h- how do you define NAS? Yeah, you know, Adrian, it's a really great question, and. You know, NAS, network as a service, and you're right, network as a service has been around for a decade. Because we have software-defined networking as a term also, right? Like SDN, like yeah. are they interchangeable? Sorry. Um, they're they're complementary, but let me let me just start with NAS and I'll get to SDN. Okay. Uh, NAS showed up with the idea that, hey, when there was site-to-site connectivity, site-to-private data centers, wouldn't be nice that I could go to a portal, provision my, my bandwidth, basically, and I can scale up and down the bandwidth. So if I had to do backup at nights to a certain data center, I could say I want at this time you know, to have this much bandwidth, but then lower it down when I don't need it so I don't have to pay that you know, huge cost. And that was the kind of on-demand kind of automation and was really the essence of NAS back then. It, it was a, a lame model of you know, network being elastic in nature. But what's happened now is the world has evolved so much that NAS is beyond connectivity, right? Clouds came in, so everyone's connected to the clouds. More than that, NAS is all of the underlay technologies kind of hit a network as a service, more like a utility. So the commercial model is, uh, I want to buy I want to buy a utility service just so we can buy you know, garbage, water, sewage uh, from our cities and so on. Can I buy this service that does it all for me, refreshes it, and I pay an operational subscription cost? It could be pay as you go, or it could be a subscription monthly cost. So that's the commercial model of NAS. Um, mm-hmm. And that's really what a lot of people like the idea is that I don't have to deal with it, I don't have to bother technology. I pay the subscription cost, I know what it costs, and, and someone else manages all that for me. That's mainly providers. But the technology behind that is not just the underlay of transports of IP fabrics or carry ethernets or, you know, optical and all the other ones. It's above that, then they've added in, you know, what we've defined is the whole application performance capability. So Mm. it's not just on demand connectivity underlays, but application performance. So now what do you think about SD-WAN does that? It looks at application, it classifies it, and then it tries to match some kind of performance objective by traffic steering or various kind of techniques. And now slicing has come into play and then slicing, slicing for 5G, where slicing will also have a performance objective. So slicing SD-WAN, both are trying to meet performance objectives or applications or some kinds of profiles that's defined. Then above that, you've got now cybersecurity coming in because every enterprise is worried about cybersecurity and they never know, are, are you secure? Am I secure? Uh, does this really work? Um, and some of them, you know, especially small, medium enterprises, don't have that knowledge. So it, it's that on-demand underlay, it's that application performance guaranteeing, it's that cybersecurity layer, which is SASEs in there, SSE, ZTNA, including authentication authorization policies. And then it's connecting to clouds of all types. And it's connecting to regional clouds, to the edge clouds. And, and even now it's moving to clouds are not just connectivity-based, but intra-cloud networking that I have cloud, you know, I've these regions all over the world where I have set up, you know, my resources of VNets and, and VPCs and how do I configure across that hyperscaler, you know, all those various regions to talk to each other. And that's very complex. So it's intra cloud networking, it's connectivity to clouds, and then it's multi-cloud, you know, on top of it. So very complex <laughs> to yeah, manage yeah. all of that. So that is at the essence that's if you go, you know what, that's too much. Just, do that for me. I, I just too much for me. Uh, it's a make it a utility. Give me a service, and then make it automated. I want that cloud like experience. I want to go to a portal, or I want APIs for a multinational that my systems can use, and it's all just automated and cloud like an experience. I don't have to wait days, months for anything to happen. I just get price quotes. I can order it, just like an Amazon, and ships. You know, and it just installs. So that's really the essence of the vision of NAS. Now, are we yeah. fully there yet? No, but we're getting there pretty fast. So, yeah, I, I remember seeing some startups that were were kind of focused on like as a service providing better latency, and and they would do it by cutting out a lot of the hops by you know maybe partnering with some of the 
like level three internet providers and things like that. Like if I can take you from 24 hops to eight hops, you know, along that journey, you can cut out a lot of late latency and things like that. Is, is that one of the things that you're seeing in this? Uh, looks like you got the sun, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think I didn't realize the sun would come out. I'm, I'm, first of all, I'm in Seattle. So that's, that's yeah. a rare thing to happen. You yeah. a second, I was bringing down the blind. Uh, that's sure. Okay. Sure. Yeah. You, you can't be expected to <laughs> expect the sun to come out in Seattle. Yeah, that, that was, that's strange. <laughs> I never thought I would see it in Seattle <laughs> yeah. uh, in the middle of winter. So, so we were saying, uh, sorry, if you can just repeat it, Adrian. Yeah. So I, I just mentioned, uh, you know, I remember a couple of years back, you know, maybe 10 years back, I started to see startups uh, that were very focused on, on trying to cut out latency and, and they would also provide security services on top of it. But the, the attraction would be, you know, like, like just through your internet provider, it might take you 23 hops to get from point A to point B. But through this provider, maybe it's only seven hops because they're partnering with like uh, level three, you know, uh, ISPs and things like that. And, uh, and then on top of that, layering on security services. So I don't know if that's, uh, you know, I don't know if that's still a thing or, uh, you know. No, that, it's that changed radically. Start- it's completely yeah, changed. Okay. What's going on is there's, there's a middle mile player coming in now. I've heard of the concept of middle mile. Um, what's happening is uh, a user, enterprise, site, it doesn't matter where they are. Um, they get to the nearest pop of that provider who's providing SASE. Um, and it could be even international because they could they could partner with other data centers or to put their sassy bits in in their clouds everywhere. So yeah. as a user or a business user or a site, whatever, I go in and say, you know, I want to access these places of destinations, include sites and clouds. But what happens, the first mile is an IP loop. So it's an IP services loop, DIA or broadband, and they're getting faster mm-hmm. and faster. And then you hit the first pop in the city. So it's very low latency. I live in Seattle. I hit the first one right here in Seattle, a very low latency. And then from there, there's no more internet. The internet stops. Mm-hmm. So there, now I pick up the SD-WAN, SASE services, that edge compute, all that stuff. And then right there, if I've got some hyperscalers that partner with that provider, they've got, ed- they've got their hyperscaler you know, edge uh, offerings of IES, PASS, or SAS. Um, and further, if they don't, then they go through a middle mile player that's a business backbone, high quality. It could be the same mm-hmm. provider's backbone, but a lot of times there's middle mile players. And then they also connect. The middle mile players are notoriously known for connecting to tons and tons of clouds. So I right. bypass the internet to go through the middle mile to then connect to every cloud I can imagine. So that's mm-hmm. the new model. And really, do I really need the internet except for the first mile loop? Now, the right. internet only plays in, into play if I don't have a very mission critical app, like right. say like an email that I can just use the internet um, or some kind yeah, of- you don't need to stuff. do that splicing. You don't need to guarantee a certain you know, bandwidth level or yeah. something like that. And, and this has become, this is the norm of why Edge is driving with the middle mile, this whole business network uh, that gotcha. is like a private network for businesses, but you hit that first pop and that's the key point. And that's where you pick up that sassy cloud and that first hop. That's where you're being scrubbed through. That's where you're getting authentication authorization policies, what you can do, where you can go. And even accessing the internet from there is, even though you're on the internet loop, you don't access the internet loop. You've got to go through the sassy cloud to get to the internet loop, to the internet. You know, I, I think that's the first time that's been explained to me. And I, I, I it's really kind of clicked with me. Like uh, you've, you've switched on that light bulb for me, like understanding, you know, what, what, uh, you know, uh, the, the purpose of edge and, and, and the reason why uh, once you reach that pop, you, you really don't want to mess around with the public internet, right? Yeah. The public you internet is too, 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 it's too, many, there's too many threats. So would you call that an there. overlay network? Is that what you would call an overlay uh, network? Well, yeah. What, what they'll do is like, you know, you pick up SD-WAN and then from mm-hmm. there on the SD-WAN, you know, there are various ways they can do it. They can converge, stop the SD-WAN and then go on an IP, IP VPN network, which is an MPLS network to get to all of the cloud providers. They can go and carry Ethernet network and then do a private IP peering. There, there are many ways of how they're doing it, but the point is that it's not the internet. It's not right. like everybody's who can access that, that business network. It's closed off um, and very secure. And, and that's the essence is that middle mile, that backbone network is secure now. It's not, the internet's only the first mile, but think about it, that scrubbing center, that SASE cloud is scrubbing all of that 
that those threat vectors um, in that in that uh, SASE cloud, so that back basically from the user to the first mile, which is the edge, that internet is where all the potentials are. But then now the SASE cloud mm. kind of has the protection from that, and then it says, okay, now where do you want to go from there? We go in the business, even on the internet. I'm gonna I'm gonna look at you know, I'm going to give you remote browser isolation. I'm going to do swigs. I'm going to look at URLs where you're going to. Like all these things now start happening, right? So, so my next stupid question, um, when you say it doesn't go over the internet, do you mean that it's encapsulated, you know, to, to such a point within encrypted tunnels, like, like it might as well not be going over the public internet, but it's actually still going over fiber that belongs to level three, AT&T, wh whoever, or do you mean it's actually going over physical, private physical fiber, um, you know, that, that doesn't touch internet nodes at all. Yeah. So you're talking about after the edge, how, what does that private network look like? So it, it is literally like, you can think of it as a private IP network, but, but the internet's, it's just using this kind of same concept of the internet, but the only people can access is are through the providers that saying, okay, you can access this site through this edge cloud. Um, gotcha. so yeah, it's using fiber. That's for sure. That, and then on top of the fiber, they'll put carry Ethernet. And on top of that, they'll put an IP layer. And then they might put SD-WAN on top of it because maybe, you know, the, the enterprise wants to go and have, have a very good performance on their application because it's, it's a line of business application. So they might go, they might put a class of service on the IP layer with different code points, or they might use IP VPNs with MPLS. Or they might just say, you know, forget that. Let's just put an SD-WAN and, and most of these hyperscalers support an SD-WAN. So I can just put SD-WAN on top of that IP fabric and allow that to do all of the privacy, the VPNs, the application performance. So there's many ways of how to do this, but that's the last way is probably the most advanced way and what probably what most users want because it gives you application performance guarantees right to gotcha. the cloud. Gotcha. So um, yeah, moving back to the certification, um, why why would you want to certify SASE services? You know, and, and who is who is pushing for this? Is this something that buyers are pushing for to get uh, some feature parity? You know, to get uh, some some you know guarantees between uh, different vendors' products, and vendors have to be drag kicking screaming to it, or are the vendors pushing for it? Like like, what's the kind of political climate to certification here? Like like, who calls for it? Who's driving for it? Uh, you know, who who really benefits from it here? Well, the and why, why do it at all? Well, the dependence the definitely the enterprise, but everybody wins. Um, okay. You know, um, all boats rise with the tide. Um, and what happens is SASE's new. And let, let's take the SD-WAN market even. The SD-WAN market's, SD market's been around for a decade and still probably $3 billion, $4 billion. That's a very... That's a very low amount for a decade of technology. Now, right. it's still growing. Uh, will it be $100 billion, $80 billion? No. Uh, no. Why is that the problem? Is SD-WAN has come out from every vendor's interpretation, and the market got confused. Mm -hmm. And now SASE is going through the same problem that no one understands what is SASE. Of course, the Gartner definition, which is right. a, you know, a marketing definition. But what do I really get? Or how am I really protected? You know, can you kind of give me some kind of assurance that if I go on this cloud as an enterprise, I'm really protected? You know, and there's really no third part third party that does that. Of course, the SASE provider will say, oh no, I, I do these QA testing, I you know, I'm up to date, you know, I promise you, but it's it's just their word, you know. And so you want a third party testing outfit that says, I've tested this, I've checked for threats, I've checked for application performance under impairments, I've checked for the right classification of the applications because everything's encrypted, you know. I've checked for performance, security functions don't take too long to create delays or the scaling out is right. I check for how I downgrade from TLS, you know, 1.3 uh, to 1.2. Um, I check for uh, authentication authorization policies for the ZTNA. These are all yeah. the things yeah. very complex. Yeah. And otherwise, an enterprise would go, uh, do, I really, do I really trust it? Oh, let's hire some outfit to go test it for me and pay oh, gobs of money just to know, you know, after the RP that they put out, that they picked a vendor, now they have to go and go, 
how do I know? Well, they have to do their own testing, hire someone, or so they can just get from due diligence work for the customer. Yeah. So basically, at the end of the day, they can just rely on a cert that says, hey, the certification gives me all of these kinds of categories telling me how well that provider or vendor did. And, and it's a third-party test that they can trust, and that's math. So, And, and, and you're directly testing these products? We're to, testing to, this um, with a partner who's been okay. doing this for 20 years. So, uh, yeah, NSS Labs, which is now Cyber Cyber right? exactly. And, mm-hmm. uh, and they've got you know, all the methodologies they've been doing for firewall testing, SD-WAN testing in the labs, for vendors. Now we're expanding to all the providers. But I think the very important part, Adrian, is where it's not a one-time test or certification. Right. It's they, they subscribe for an annual subs- subscription as a vendor or a service provider. They get the ability to test you know, as much as they, they want. Of course, they can't test every day. It's not a QA process. It's really right. every time you have a new bit coming out from your CIC process, a new version on your cloud, or you can test, uh, get in the pipeline and test. And But additionally, there is a rating and what we want is like the Moody Bonds. We want a rating yeah. that everybody tries to strive to become the best to the top. Mm-hmm. You know, so there's a race to the top. And just like Moody Bonds, when you buy corporate bonds, you know, you want, you know, by triple A's, you know, you're going to get very little default. You know, it can't guarantee there'll be no default. It can't guarantee you'll have no threats, but you're going to have very minimal threats because it's being checked so thoroughly. Uh, and, and you get a triple A. So you're really doing your job. Um, if you get, you know, a triple C, it's like, okay, well, that's considered, you know, in the, in the bond market, not very credible. Uh, right. Same thing. If, would I rely on a triple C to protect myself? Probably not. So we've done something unique. We've taken the Moody Bonds idea, put it into a rating system, just like the same as Moody Bonds. And then we have categories, like I talked about, threats with checks for evasions, exploits, you know, malware, checking for performance, you know, classification, right. all of those are categories that get scores. And if you don't meet something, you get a less score. And then all of those scores roll up into final, you know, grading, like, you know, gotcha. A's, triple A's and so on. So that's what we've done with the subscription model. So even if a vendor or provider doesn't do well, they, they can come back and say, okay, well, where did I not score well? Well, I didn't score well on threats. Now they can work with, you know, CyberRing directly to find out what threats they did not pass in, work, fix all their code, come back and test again and certify again. So, so if, uh, so cyber ratings.org is doing all the actual hands-on testing. Um, what, what does MEF do? Do do you guys come up with the methodology and hand it off to cyber ratings or do you collaborate to come up with that? Do the vendors have input into the, the methodologies that are used? You know, we didn't talk about what MEF is. MEF is an association around the planet um, with 100 service, 130 service providers around the world, like, you know, the big ones, ATT, Verizon's, mm-hmm. right. European providers, Orange, you know, DT and so on. Um, and it's all over the world, 130 of them. And then it's all the vendors, you know, the SASE vendors, cybersecurity vendors, the uh, transport vendors and so on, automation vendors, all of them are all part. So that's 200 plus members in MEF. Um, they all provide input into exactly what you said. What is these test requirements for SD-WAN, for SSC, for ZTNA. And th- you have to have three tests, three different tests and certifications to get the SASE cert. So it's it's because the way the market's rolled it out with this disaggregated, you know, with different parts from different vendors and providers are using either a unified or a single source vendor for SASE or they're using best of breeds to make up SASE. We had to do that. So that's one. Every member gets to participate in that specification requirements of how it'll be tested. The, okay. You call it the methodology. It's, it's the methodology. It's the requirements of what we tested. And they all have a say in it. And that's the standard process of math. And from that, we then give that off to cyber and say, okay, that's mm. what. And it's, every, it's, it's completely yeah. visible to everybody. It's open and visible to the public, open, visible to the members. Open, everybody ha- could see what's going to get tested, how it's going to get tested. And, and, and some people might say, oh, that sounds like like just kind of a formality, but um, the amount of cat herding you're implying that you're doing there it is not easy. And and like that, that's both an art and a skill, I imagine. It, you know, Adrian, that's a great question because we started the beta program, I think, and we launched it in October at our biggest. Uh, it sounds like map. having 300 children and asking, what would you like for lunch? 
<laughs> well, our members are pretty good. They, 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 the vendors are part of that feedback. The service part is part of the feedback. So, you know, it's consensus building and it's good. Consensus gives you a better quality product. So it takes longer, but you know, it gets there. And we've done now the, the documents that define the requirements are done. Uh, they're going to final publications, which means they're pretty well done. Um, so there's a lot of feedback already in there, but hurting like, you know, Certifying cybersecurity as a service is really, really riddle full of complexities that we're learning. Yeah. And there are a lot of people want it this way and want it that way. And you want a neutral, fair certification, not biased to anyone's you know, implementation right. or how they do it. Or So it, it's, it's that little balancing act to become fair and have high reputation. So that when an enterprise, the most important enterprise buys and says, don't buy, they say, do you have this MEF certification of SASE or SD-WAN or SD-WAN? Because you can get individuals too. They can be assured to have confidence that they're buying a service that's really being tested. It's like, yeah. think about, you know, you buy an appliance that's being tested for fire and, you know, dropping. Right. And, you know, I think that's the UL rating or something kind of rating. It's a certification, right? By a third party. Yeah. You buy your Wi-Fi, you know, or you buy your HDMI, you know it's being certified to plug in with all the different TVs yeah. and all that, right? Yeah. It gives you confidence as a consumer that I don't have to buy this stupid thing. I don't thing have to buy Sony's cable. Here and doesn't work, right? and I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> it's only going to work with Sony's cable like, yeah. <laughs> to go between it, the PlayStation and, it, and then the Hitachi TV or something like it, that. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That, that's right. exactly right. So that's, that's what we think is really powerful that we – we know that even if you disaggregate SAS and you buy a vendor for SD-WAN a year and another vendor for SSC and ZT in a year, we know it's going to work. It's been tested for integration. So, Yeah, and it's interesting because we we spend a lot of time, um, you know, going going over new products and services and, uh, you know, for, for our audience, you know, explaining what's – trying to explain, trying to understand and explain what's happening in the market – and and we've seen a lot of cases where somebody maybe has one or two pieces of of sassy like maybe they do ztna and swig but that's it you know and and they call it and they label it sassy right you know so all of a sudden you get customers who are comparing a company that only does two of the things that that gartner lists and somebody else is doing all five of them or maybe five plus three more and yeah it becomes very difficult to uh to compare those directly uh for for the customer yeah. So, and so I think I don't, I you know, maybe I didn't cover this, but something that's really important is uh, we standardized sd and SASE because the vendors weren't willing to do that. They wanted to keep their, yeah. their, their language. Well, they they want their, it to be their offering. They want that to be the standard, right? Yeah. They want de facto yeah. by their, by their, by their constructs, their labels, their vocabulary. Uh, so what we did in uh, starting 2017, we defined SD-WAN or what are the constructs, labels, vocabulary, how to behave as a service. And that's kind of how we did carry Ethan. So we did that 2017. Now we're on version three. Now right. we just released SSE and ZTNA and that's version one. Now we're on version two. So that's how we feel like now we can get the industry to at least say apples to apples, talk apple, orange to orange just yeah. by the standardization. But we went further than that. Which says standards are not good enough because they're just paper. How can you get that to then apply to something tangible to the enterprise, which is certification? So we have both. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. And that's uh, like we've also talked to uh, SSE came out, you know, shortly after SASE became a term. Then there was SSE and we're like, <laughs> come on, guys, <laughs> like <laughs> throw us a bone here. Like this is, uh, this is hard to keep up with. And that's why the market's in a confused state. If you look at the, the projection where SASE is, it's so nascent because there's so much confusion. People yeah. don't know what they're buying. And our goal is, and why the vendors are agreeing to certify and why the providers are agreeing to certify, they realize if we can remove the confusion from the market, everybody wins and they yeah. can still get their differentiation on top. They could, their feature set could still be very unique. Right. You know, uh, how they do things, you know, and their secret sauce can still be there. Service providers can provide great automation support, emergency response teams, SOCs. That stuff we don't test. You know, we're just saying, are you secure? We're not testing how fast you can respond to, to, to emergency response. You know, yeah. so my point is that there are many, many. So what we always say, MEF creates a blueprint for our NAS. In our NAS, we have underlays, overlays, cybersecurity, you know, cloud, multi-cloud, all the automation. 
you can take that blueprint, you can package any way you want, you can use our certifications and so on. And then with all of that, you can then put all of your secret sauce on top, all your differentiation on top, all your automations, your support, all these things that people care about that, you know, that's beyond technology. So that's how we see it. Just like open source, we, we're the yeah. foundational layer. Yeah, and it, I, I like that you separate uh, the uh, scores are being separated out because different buyers, you know, maybe they're, you know, uh, prioritizing application performance over, you know, some of the security stuff. Maybe, maybe yes. I have a, a video game company and I'm worried about my subscriptions. So, like performance uh, for, for a lot of organizations, for a lot of services, that's the one deal breaker. That's where companies lose subscribers, right? You know, if, if, if they see the you know, the buffering uh, symbol show up, like they're gone. Uh, so true. So true, Adrian. It, 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 you know, a line of business applications, they they can't wait and something goes wrong and something disconnects. It's like, oh my gosh, it's some of these line of business apps are very crucial. And they're, yeah. and they're all kind of depending on each other. Some of these applications depends on other ones. As you get to microservices, you know, and truly cloud native, both of the applications, there's a lot of dependencies of the network, you know, um, that has to has to behave like one big you know computer bus, but it's distributed across the planet. Right. And so these you know network has become the bus of the old computer, <laughs> but yeah. it has to have predictable, reliable, and it has to be secure. So this has yeah. become the norm, and and it's it's hard. People think, oh well, just it's it's plug amazing. In and it's, go. <laughs> The more you learn about how DNS works and and how uh, BGP works, you're like, oh my god, how does this work at all, right? <laughs> well, and then you talk about software defined networks, you know, yeah. SDN, and and then you so automation. Much if I even went through automation, blow your mind. Uh, yeah. That all of this has to work like systems on systems on systems that have dependencies. If one fail, the whole system can fail. So just like our bodies have all of these various systems that work together to create, you know us <laughs> working healthy yeah. and being normal, you know, comp you know, these, these, com these, um, these systems that are tied with networks and, and the experience you get from your cell phone and, and your, from the user, it's not so simple. It's yeah. highly, highly complex, but the, the, the majority go, oh, it just works. I don't know. I don't know how it works. I have no clue how it works. <laughs> yeah. And we're the ones that have to figure it out, how to make yeah, all this thing work. It's amazing you have to worry about everything from, uh, you know, a nation state messing with BGP, doing some kind of injection attack to Bob with a backhoe, you know, <laughs> who's exactly. rented a backhoe, like digging in the wrong place and, and hoping there's there's some redundancy there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You, you nailed it, Adrian. It, it, it's, it's spot on. It's, it's, you know, and I don't expect everybody to know. It, it's okay. You know, we don't know how TVs really, I mean, I, I do because I'm a techie, but most people have no clue how TVs or their cell phones work or they don't yeah. care. They just want to experience their users. So I don't expect them to know, but it's our job to know. So, yeah. Well, good stuff. Um, and so listeners who are, are vendors and listeners who are uh, potential buyers of, of Sassy, wh where should each of these groups go to learn more about either getting certified if they're a vendor or uh, viewing these ratings and these certifications when they're available? Uh, so yeah, so good point. So you can go to mef.net, M-E-F.net, um, and you'll find everything you want there from the certifications to uh, the SASE standards, SD-WAN standards, uh, to our certification coming out. Now we're in beta, so we have not re released those ratings yet of the vendors. We've taken the top six vendors uh, that are providing SASE now. Uh, they're going through the beta right now, going through that SD-WAN testing, SSE, ZTNA, then we're testing for the integration, giving a SASE. So just going through that now, providers are going through that now also. And we've narrowed it down to a beta. You know, I think we put a release, press release saying 16, I think, providers and vendors. Just We announced it at our g e event in October. Um, and so we're just you know finishing that. But that will be published in our registry on MEF.net. Probably uh, coming up here in Q124 is, is, is what we're striving for. So, so to answer your question, MEF.net to find everything about certification, SASE, SD-WAN. Uh, we're, the, we're the official standards body for all of that. And we're the official body now for all the certification. And we're automating all of that. So that whole, our APIs are automating all of that underlay, the cloud connectivity, the SASE, the SD-WAN, the, you know, the application performance. So it, it's been a huge task. <laughs> Uh, and not sure. just done by me. It was 
you know, the vision of our board, vision of our technology advisory board, which are all these sassy vendors, uh, automation vendors, our members, incredible gifted members, our contractors that we, we brought in. It's, it's been a huge feat to get to this. And I've been six years as a CTO uh, driving this from, from a vision with the board and, and the wow. members. So it, it's, it's, it's great to finally see things c- come together and get, and we have huge adoption now in certain areas. So we're really, really excited about the fact when you get adoption, you know, it's, you've done a good job. Awesome. Yeah. I'm, I'm eager to see, will, will the ratings be public once they get uh, published? Oh, yeah. or, okay. oh, absolutely. On our yeah. registry publicly, you will see a rating in a badge. And in that badge, you'll see categories, uh, what we call scorecards of how they scored in each of those categories. I Excellent. Talk about. Yeah. And that's coming out. And the great thing is the badges can change because every time they want to do a new t- cert, they'll do a right. cert, but it'll be a new badge, but it'll have a different date, different version of software tested. It, it maybe, maybe it'll get regression. So maybe it'll go down. Um, yeah. Maybe they'll get better. In a, I mean, hopefully they'll get better and it goes up. So right. it's, it's, I think there'll be some kind of fluctuation. I don't think everything's going to be like perfect all the time, but that's kind of what our goal is to get everybody up there. That's what we want to see the industry. Yeah. Awesome stuff. Well, thank you so much, Pascal, for joining me on Enterprise Security Weekly today. This is, this is, you've answered all my questions, which is all I can hope for. <laughs> well, Adrian, thank you for inviting me and Neff. And, uh, you know, your, your, your publication and is such an amazing um, um, asset to the community. So, you know, your shows and it's, it's just really great to see that many, many, many cybersecurity professionals can really find some sorts of truth they can go to really get educated yeah. and, and get to know what's going on. Our goal is the same as your goal. Less confused people in the industry. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Well, Less thank you Adrian, for having me. <laughs> thank you. And uh, uh, stick around if you're listening or watching, we'll be right back in a few moments with the weekly enterprise news. 